Up next, a team of researchers embark on an underwater adventure and stumble upon an unexpected colorful world. My research on biofluorescence started accidentally. At the beginning of 2011, I went down to Little Cayman Island to help some colleagues photograph coral biofluorescence. And just by accident, a green fluorescent eel happened to swim in front of one of our photographer's cameras. We didn't actually see that underwater. It was only afterwards in the image that the photographer presented to us. We thought at first it was a joke that it was photoshopped in, but he confirmed that it wasn't. And then we could tell that it was a false mora eel and it was brightly green. There was nothing reported in the literature about green fluorescence in fishes, so it got us thinking about how widespread this phenomenon might be in fishes, and then led to other studies where we went down and collected as many fishes as we could and scanned them for biofluorescence. We felt like we were really onto something new here, like we were just starting to discover all these different families. There'd been one paper that mentioned a little bit of red fluorescence, but now we were seeing green, we were seeing patterns, we we're seeing both green and red, and the fact that we were seeing it in so many different species really got us excited. Biofluorescence is an optical property in which light is absorbed and then given back off as a slightly lower energy. So blue light might be absorbed, taken in, and given back off almost instantaneously as green or reds. Biofluorescence was first discovered in the 1960s. The scientists found that it was tightly coupled with a bioluminescent jellyfish, where the jellyfish is producing a blue light, and there was this green fluorescent protein that was absorbing that blue light and giving off the green light that you would see from the animal. As the molecular biology revolution took hold in the 1990s, they were able to figure out the sequence of that fluorescent protein. They could take that out, put it in front of another gene, and in a living organism, it's like putting a bicycle reflector on it. And suddenly now you could look at gene expression, you could see how proteins move around inside cells. So this really has transformed our way in which we can study life. It probably took us over two years of designing different kinds of equipment that we can use to study fish biofluorescence. For the submarine, we've also designed different kinds of cameras that could go to 4,000 meters deep. We use very high energy blue lights to stimulate biofluorescence. And then we have a filter over the camera that takes out this blue energizing light and lets us see the lower energy, longer wavelengths, the greens, red, oranges, and yellows. Many of the fish groups in which biofluorescence is very common have a filter built into their eye that enables them to see biofluorescence. It functions to eliminate any reflected ambient or blue light, the same kind of setup we'd use in our cameras. In our search to find out how many species and how prevalent biofluorescence is, we took trips to the Bahamas, we took trips to the Solomon Islands, we went to the Mystic Aquarium, and we kind of went tank by tank by tank, seeing which fish displayed biofluorescence. What I found most surprising is just how widespread it is across the tree of life for bony fishes and cartilaginous fishes as well. What I also find interesting is that it's most varied and most common in very cryptically patterned camouflage lineages on the reef. Fishes that you would never notice otherwise under white light, under fluorescent light, they're extremely brilliant and vivid. We know that biofluorescence probably functions in mating behavior, communication within a species. So species are somehow identifying each other, potentially using fluorescent patterns, which is quite novel. We have to put ourselves in the position of the fish and what they can see. And some of these patterns may actually act to make the fish very difficult to see for other fish. For more from the American Museum of Natural History, check out the link on our website.